Hey guys, you ready to make this super easy mug that I just showed you? All right, let's get started. I am doing voiceover because while I'm doing this process, I make sure to wear a proper protection. So I am wearing a respirator during this process, especially during the mixing of the epoxy, which is right here. There it is. I'm mixing it up. I'll give it a go. It's just a part A, part B epoxy. And the one I use only needs to be mixed for probably one to two minutes. And you don't want to over mix it. I know there's other epoxy resins out there that need to be mixed for several moments, several minutes. So the one that I use uh, does not. It's one to two minutes and it's good to go. Uh, as you can see, I've got a tumbler already on the spinner here. And I always purchase my tumblers with a uh, coating already on them. I know there's other tumbler artists out there that spray paint them and do all sorts of funky things to them, but I already buy mine uh, coated. I think it's a powder, powder coating, but I, I couldn't tell you 100%. I don't know, it's just a, bl a matte black finish. Uh, again, that part doesn't even matter. Um, oh, look at that, the epoxy. I'm still mixing there. Should be pretty much ready. It looks like the consistency is good. And uh, I've got the tumbler going at a fairly slow speed. It takes a little practice to get this part um, down pat. Putting epoxy on the mugs, I would say, is probably the hardest part. Um, but anyway, once you do it a couple of times, uh, we're good. Oh, here we are. We're putting it on there. And as you can see, now you'll be able to see that it's spinning. And you can actually see there's a little blemish there on the top of the mug. That doesn't matter because we're going to cover it up. Uh, I can't remember exactly where I learned this process. It probably was a, a process of practice or, or trial and error. Um, that happens. You get used to sanding or stripping your mugs down and trying again or recoding it or, you know, working with what you've got. So, but this is one of my favorite techniques. It's super easy, especially once you become a master of epoxying. This epoxy that I use is actually a Canadian product. Oh here, I'm speeding it up for you because you don't need to see all the details I guess. We're gonna get to some of the fun part. Um, here we go. So looks like I'm getting the epoxy on there so it's fairly smooth. I put a, a lot on there because you want the epoxy to move. The epoxy in this one is a an art epoxy so it takes a long time to dry. And here I'm showing uh, that I'm using some alcohol ink. So I use a, a various uh, of a variety, sorry, of different alcohol inks. So I'm not promoting one brand over the other. And I'm just dropping alcohol ink right onto the epoxy. So you can't really see it because it's clear epoxy on a black mug. But just if you hold tight, you'll see when the magic happens. So stick with me here because you'll see. So that was a red that I put on there. I'm now going for an orange, so if you can take a guess for um, what kind of a look I'm going for here. I'm hoping to work with the rainbow. So if anyone knows their rainbow, Roy G. Biv, so it's red, orange. Looks like I should be into a yellow. Yep, dropping a yellow, a few drops, and of course I miss sometimes. That's okay, okay, I'm speeding it up again. Uh, so yellow, then we had green. And we have some blue, and oh yeah, there's some blue, indigo and violet on the end there. Don't forget to put a little bit of a drop on the very bottom of your tumblers, so it, it has some action there too. So here's the magic part. So now you've got a, a white pigment, and keep in mind any of your white alcohol ink isn't just alcohol ink. There's actually an acrylic paint inside, so you have to shake it up really good and uh, it does uh, something a little different here so it mixes in so here's where the fun part happens this is my favorite part so because the epoxy i use is an art epoxy and it takes a while for it to um, solidify or to harden up um, this epoxy here will actually stay moving for at least two three two and a half maybe three hours so it's going to keep moving and mixing around and that's where the the fun comes because it's going to keep blending with the colored ink underneath 
and it's going to create these really fun wave patterns. So typically I say less is more. Um, I kind of feel like I might have gone a little overboard when you see how much ink I actually put on um, this tumbler in particular, but um, I kind of like the less is more. Here I'm going for the full rainbow effect. Uh, once you see how it turns out in the end, um, there are parts of the mug that I find the colors blend nicer together, but hey, that's what it's all about. It's about trial and error. See what you like, give it a try, give it, um, you know, give it some time because it does take time. I have done blends on, on it with this very technique and thought, oh man, that's ugly. I'm going to have to strip that. But uh, I happened to post a video about it on Facebook and somebody absolutely loved it because it reminded them of a gemstone of some sort, I believe. So, hey, you never know. Even though I didn't like it, somebody else loved it and uh, they purchased it right away. So um, keep going with it. Um, and even though you might not like it, somebody else may uh, love it. So, so now that I had dropped some white um, alcohol ink in there, now I'm going back on top of the white with some of the color. And then you'll see then it starts to move the white ink around a little bit more, the pigment. Uh, you'll see it start to blend a little better. You'll see some of it come together a little more and start swirling a bit as it moves around the tumbler, which is really cool. The one thing you want to keep in mind when you're working with this is to try and keep the, the tumbler itself on the spinner as level as possible. Um, I do recall with this one in particular that I found that it was spinning a little too much and creating a, uh, a sort of a, a tight spiral look on the purple ink down on the bottom, which I didn't like. So then what I did was I propped my spinner up a little bit, so then the mug was tilted facing towards the top of the mug, just to bring some of that, separate some of that, the spinning marks. And what I also did was I, I turned the spinner off and had it rotate in the opposite direction too, which did some other really funky things. Um, so this is where you get to play around and be creative and, and make it your own. So this is going to totally change after time because this is all going to keep mixing and moving, like I said, for, for two or three hours. Um, and you can see I'm still adding some ink there. Uh, I probably would have gone in with a little bit more white. Maybe I do. Well, I don't know. Anyway, play around with it. Have fun. Uh, and I can't leave it alone. I tend to come in on, and check on the mug every five minutes to, to see what it's doing. And if I don't like the way it's mixing, then I will adjust the uh, tumbler itself, or the spinner, sorry, the um, rotating spinner part. So the cup then will tilt either one way or the other. And that will bring it um, the swirls moving in a, in a different direction or moving up, down. Anyway, you know what I'm kind of speaking of, don't you? Anyway, you just play around with it. Try it out. Uh, I would say after though the first five minutes, ten minutes after you're, you're kind of done, I wouldn't start adding any more ink after that. I would just let it go. Um, I have in some cases put my glove on and used my finger to manipulate some of the ink in the epoxy, but totally up to you, right? You can kind of play around with it. Anyway, this is the artistic part. You let it do its thing and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. I'll, I'll um, fast forward this a little so you can see uh, what we end up with. Here we have uh, the next morning after this had been spinning for several hours through the night and uh, I love it. I love the way that the blue and the purple and the pink uh, or the magenta turned out. Uh, I'm not a huge super fan of the, the red and the maybe the yellow but uh, overall I'm super happy with it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it next. It will need another clear coat of epoxy but maybe I'll put a name on it or something. I love it. 
Let me know if you try this method and how it turns out. Catch you later. Bye.